Friends, let us continue our discussion on kinetics of catalytic reactions and to refresh our memory, uh, our reaction is let us say A going to B. In this reaction, there are two adsorption and desorption steps which we discussed last time. And now we need to connect these two, these two reactions by bringing in surface chemical reaction, where the actual transformation of species A to species B in the adsorbed state takes place. So, this is our surface reaction. SR for short. Now, when there are surface reactions, there are various different possibilities. For example, we talked about this is my active sites, some of which are occupied by A and during the course of reaction, this A is now going to change to B that is my surface surface reaction. Now, when it comes to surface reaction, we could have a single site reaction that is A A adsorbed over here onto this site becomes B. So, that is one type of reaction. So, these are single site reactions. But more common are the dual site reactions and this could take place of various different forms. For example, A L, so this A L could interact with a vacant site L, these two together and this gives rise to product B. So, A L plus L gives rise to let us say a product B L plus C L okay? that is one type of type of surface reaction dual site reaction. Another possibility of course, is one type of adsorbed species combining with another type of adsorbed species giving rise to C L plus D L. So, if the overall reaction is A plus B giving rise to C plus D, we could have this kind of kind of uh, reaction. There is also an possibility that an adsorbed species interacts directly with the reactant molecule. So, B is not strongly adsorbed or its adsorption on the active site is not required and it directly interacts with A L and we get our desired product let us say C L plus D L. These are what are called as radial Ailey mechanisms, radial Ailey mechanism. So, adsorption of B is very weak and B in directly interacts. Whichever may be the may be the uh, uh, adsorption uh, or surface reaction step, we have to write an equivalent equivalent rate form for this and let us let us look at this particular dual site reaction and write an rate of surface reaction as K S R the forward reaction rate constant times concentration of C A L times concentration of C B L minus K prime S R the reverse reaction rate times C C L times C D L. So, this now becomes our, our reaction rate as far as the surface reaction is concerned.
this is still not the reaction rate of this overall reaction, but we are talking rate of individual individual reaction. So, we can also write this as taking K S R out C A L C B L minus C C L C D L capital K S R, where capital K S R is nothing but K S R this is this is nothing but K S R divided by K prime S R. The small k's are indicated as a kinetic rate constant. Capital K, let us make it somewhat different. Capital K as indication of equilibrium constant. So, this is an equilibrium constant for this surface chemical chemical reaction. Few additional uh, uh, points, for example if you consider this this particular reaction and let us say that we have a adsorbed over here now for this reaction to take place there could be b absorbed at different locations and so on but for this reaction to take place the interaction will be with the closest neighbor. So, A L and closest B L will interact. This A L for example, is unlikely to interact with this B L, uh, this B L over here, which is which is far away from 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 the uh, 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 A L species. So, when we write C B L, the idea essentially is it is actually C B L prime or C B L in the neighborhood of A L. And if you assume that there is no favorable distribution, so probability that the fraction of the total concentration C B L is this nearing neighbor, then this F for example, will get absorbed into uh, 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 this rate constant. Okay. So, now let us complete our go back to go back to this reaction and complete our our kinetic description. So, that we can now develop the rate of reaction. Okay. So, let us let us write A L going to B L as as uh, 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 the uh, uh, as the <coughs> third step. So, this is actually 3, 4, 5 the steps 3, 4, 5 of our uh, 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 overall schematic uh, that we that we uh, talked about. So, now let us let us write down the rates of individual steps. So, that we we then put together the idea of determining the determining the rate. So, let me let me rearrange this so that we are our overall reaction is A going to B our adsorption stage is A plus L giving rise to A L with the rate of this adsorption step. Now, I am going to write it in a simplified manner. Where K A, this is a rate constant, kinetic rate constant, and this is the equilibrium constant. Okay, so we will follow the same terminology for all the rates. So, let us say that our surface reaction is A L going to B L. 
So, we have <coughs> we have rate of surface reaction which we just now wrote. same terminology okay and let us write down the rate of desorption okay rate of desorption which will be in this case following the same terminology that is adsorption term we will use as k a or k b in this case. So, direction of uh, adsorption k b reverse as k prime. So, this for example, will be strictly speaking k prime b c b l minus k b c b c l, okay, which if we take out k b can be written as c b l by k b minus c b c l. Okay. So, so that k b k a are still the adsorption constants to keep the terminology consistent. So, we have these three steps and our interest is to find what is the rate of a going to b that is our interest okay so since these concentrations such as cl cal cbl are not easily measurable oh, concentrations of a and b are easily measurable so what we want to do is actually get the rate expression which is function of ca and cb by eliminating all the other other uh, uh, species. Now, how do we do that? Uh, simplify this whole uh, uh, scenario. So, let us let us uh, try to simplify this by saying that by doing the following. Okay. So, we had these rate expressions. So, let us let us try to simplify this. So, so, what is the what is the way in which we are going to we are going to simplify this. Now, we earlier talked about two different approaches of simplifying it. That is what we want to do is we want to de develop the rate which is a function of C A and C B. So, that means, I have to eliminate if you examine these uh, if you examine these rate expressions we have C A no problem, but we have C L which we do not know we have C A L which we do not know and also we have C B L. So, we need to eliminate C A L C B L and C L somehow from this from this rate expression. So, in order to do that, we are now going to invoke one of the two approaches and we will start with adsorption or quasi equilibrium approach, because that is easier to deal with and therefore, naturally more common or more uh, widely used approach. If you recall what does this approach say, it, this approach says that if you have series of reactions as we have over here, the slowest of all these reactions is the rate determining rate determining step. Okay. So, the rate of my overall reaction rate of my overall reaction is the rate of the slowest step and because compared to a slow step such as the surface reaction adsorption and desorption are very rapid and therefore, they reach equilibrium very fast. So, reaction 1 and reaction 1 and reaction 3 are equilibrium almost reached equilibrium whereas, reaction 2 is the 
is the slow slow steps uh, uh, that that uh, 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 as compared to as compared to other reaction so let us let us therefore say let us therefore say the rate of my reaction of this reaction is the rate of my surface reaction okay so i am going to say that rate of my reaction is my surface reaction rate okay this is my reaction reaction rate so let me let me remove this and that is the rate of my overall overall reaction now we are going to say that adsorption desorption are at equilibrium so let me let me simplify now the the this rate expression and <coughs> write my r adsorption is zero okay rate of adsorption is zero notice here i use the sign approximately and there is a reason for that because if you say that your adsorption rate is zero the process has reached complete equilibrium then the reaction rate itself will be zero because no reaction can proceed if one of the reaction has reached equilibrium so then what is the meaning of equilibrium or quasi equilibrium the quasi equilibrium means the following as we wrote here what we are saying is that adsorption step is very large so value of this ka is very high very high so for us to have the value of value of this adsorption rate to a finite small value if k is extremely large would require that this is close to zero the bracketed quantity and therefore this process has reached almost equilibrium so if we do that what it what it means is what it means is that my cal is equal to ka adsorption constant ca into cl so this is the implication of quasi equilibrium if i apply the same thing for the third reaction i will get cbl equal to equilibrium constant kb cb cl two quantities cal cbl related to cl so if you have third relationship so we had r ad approximately equal to 0 r desorption approximately equal to 0 remember we had three unknown quantities ca l c b l c l we know two relationships we know we need third relationship and that third relationship is provided by the total active catalyst catalyst sites must be c a plus c l plus c b l so what it means is what all i have done is of the total sites on the catalyst surface ct some are vacant some are some are occupied by a some are occupied by b so this gives me my required third relationship and if we now if we now substitute this if you now substitute this for C cl and cal into this 
uh, into this uh, uh, surface reaction rate. So, I will get the following. So, let me overall reaction mechanism quasi equilibrium approximation and total active sites and my rate of reaction with the assumption that So, I solve for C A, C L, C B L, C A L using these three re relationships and substitute those values I will get R equal to this as my kinetic rate expression. What is it? K A K S R C T into C A minus C B divided by K equilibrium. What is K equilibrium? K equilibrium here is actually the product of the three steps in the reaction. The equilibrium constant K A for adsorption step multiplied by the equilibrium constant K S R for the surface reaction divided by the equilibrium constant of the adsorption of B. Okay. That is that is my equilibrium and this is our thermodynamic property K equilibrium delta G 0 is equal to minus R T L N K equilibrium that K equilibrium. So, now if we look at look at this particular particular uh, rate expression, we find there are both equilibrium constants as well as as well as the uh, kinetic rate constants. Now, if you if we if we examine this more carefully, we find that there is a term C T that is the uh, total active sites and it, that also is not very easy to measure. So, that is typically typically absorbed into the rate constant and write this whole expression, I will write this whole expression as for the reaction A going to B, the rate is the constant K times C A minus C B divided by K equilibrium the whole thing divided by 1 plus K A C A plus K B C B. Now, if we if we examine this particular relationship and you will find for other kinetic uh, catalytic uh, kinetics as well, the following structure emerges for the rate, rate equal to some kinetic term. multiplied by driving force divided by adsorption term. Kinetic term K driving force C A minus C B by K equilibrium. Why is it called driving force? Because at equilibrium this term is 0 that is K equilibrium is C A C B by C A. So, for this reaction to take place the driving force is the difference between C A 
minus C B divided by K equilibrium and when the driving force goes to 0, reaction reaches equilibrium, the rate becomes 0. And this adsorption term is this whole term in the denominator, why is it called ads adsorption term? If you recall when we talked about adsorption and desorption phenomena, we had this term which arises from A A plus L giving A L and so on. So, so we have <coughs> we have this kind of rate expression for for uh, uh, Okay. Now, before we go to the second approach, let us just look at what are the simplified forms of this rate expression. If the reaction for example, is irreversible for all practical purposes, what does it mean? This means that K equilibrium is infinitely large, which means that my rate will be if I substitute it over here K A K C A by K A C A plus K B C B. Okay. That is that is one kind of kind of uh, uh, simplification possible. What is the other simplification possible? So, this is when the reaction is irreversible. The other kind of simplification for example, would, would be if A and B are weakly adsorbed, what does it what does it mean? This means that K A value our equilibrium constant and K B value are small. If that is the case, then denominator terms are relatively small compared to 1 and we can simplify this as simply C A minus C B by K equilibrium. So, if the gases are weakly adsorbed onto the active site, we get this kind of kind of uh, another simplification that is that is uh, uh, often done is that let us say that only A is weakly adsorbed. A is weakly adsorbed, so K A is small. So, that is this term is negligible compared to the K B term. So, rate will simplify to K into C A minus C B by K equilibrium divided by 1 plus K B C B. These are all various different simplifications that are possible if we if we uh, 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 simplify the overall overall rate expression. So, to recap, what what did we what did we uh, 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 do? We had a we had a overall reaction. We wrote the mechanism for this reaction. So, mechanism we identified the rate determining step and used quasi equilibrium approximation. So, we had adsorption rate 0 almost 0, desorption rate almost 0, total side balance and the rate determining step giving us the rate of reaction and simplified this little bit and got our overall rate reaction. So, three steps, step 1, step 2, step 3. Of course, the next challenge will be to experimentally verify this reaction rate, whether does it indeed follow this kind of form. If it is yes, then our mechanism is correct, step 1 we are not made any error, but if not, 
then we have made some error somewhere. So, we have to rework this entire exercise by assuming a different mechanism, making perhaps maybe different simplifications and so on and so forth. Now, it could very well happen that surface reaction is also fast compared to adsorption. So, desorption is the rate determining. If that is the case, then we will say R A D R S R R equal almost equal to 0 and R D E is not equal to 0 and we will get a different kind of kind of rate expression. Let us let us look at the second approach that that we we could uh, also also follow. Okay. This is of course, quasi steady state approximation. So, what is this this approach? Let us let me let me write my reaction once again A going to B overall reaction the mechanism and now we are going to use quasi steady state approach. Our rate of this reaction is R A D this is R S R and this is R desorption. Okay. So, we are going to now use quasi equilibrium or quasi steady state approximation to, to uh, uh, write the uh, derive the rate expression. So, our objective is still to get R as a function of C A C B. Okay. So, to use quasi steady state approximation, watch this approximation. It says that some of the species in my reaction scheme are highly reactive. So, their formation and their uh, appearance and disappearance are very rapid and therefore, their dynamics is almost negligible. They have reached a steady state not the whole system has reached a steady state, but few of these uh, species have reached the steady state. So, which are the species in this scheme of things? Yes, you guessed it right A L plus A L and B L, because these are active uh, species. So, they get formed and get uh, disappeared also very rapidly. So, we can write the balances for this. So, let us write C A L. closed system once again and we can write in terms of these rates of these three reactions as R A D because it is getting formed in the first reaction minus R S R. You could actually write the stoichiometric matrix and then uh, write the entire set if you want to verify it, you will get the same thing. R S R minus R desorption for the species species B. What is the rate of <coughs> consumption of A minus R adsorption? What is the rate of formation of B R desorption? So, the entire set of mass balances for this for this species. So, now we are going to make a quasi steady state approximation which says that d c l d t is close to 0 dynamics is very slow d c b l d t is also very low value. So, c l c b l have reached steady state that is species a l and species b l. If we do this with this two this set of relationships, what do we get? We get 
R A D equal to R S R and from second one R S R equal to R desorption or in other words quasi steady state approach tells us that the rate of adsorption is equal to rate of surface reaction is equal to rate of desorption. And then naturally you can see this would this this approximation together with this would imply DCA DT is what is our rate of reaction and that is so this is equal to R let us call this each each of these rate as R then we will get what we expect. The rate of disappearance of A is R rate of appearance of B is R I mean that is what that is what uh, uh, we, we, we expect anyway. Now, if we now our next step is to get actually that R in terms of C A and C B. So, if you want to do that again once again C L, C A L, C B L are unknown sp uh, quantities. So, we need to solve for them and if you see here we already have two relationships all we need is the total balance. So, we have three relationships that is the same active side balance that we used we have three relationships and three unknown quantities. So, we can eliminate those and if you do that for this particular reaction we will get R equal to What did we get for equilibrium approach if we used equilibrium approach if we use then we get uh, okay, rate constant k. So, k this is what equilibrium approach gave us or quasi equilibrium. This is what this is what quasi steady state approximation gives us. If you look at these two relationships they are almost same why almost same they are they are qualitatively exactly identical look at the driving force term, look at the adsorption term functionally they are same and then there is a kinetic kinetic uh, term. So, both these approaches gave us the same functional form for the rate expression, but I must also caution you that that is not always the case. It was only for this reaction C A and C B or uh, rather just A going to B that we got both forms to be same. Uh, in general quasi steady state form and quasi equilibrium approaches need not give you the same functional form. But if that is that is the that is uh, the case here at least uh, uh, they, they are functionally same which also tells us that somehow quasi steady state approximation and quasi equilibrium approximation are related to related to each other. By the way, what is this alpha, beta and gamma of course, what are they? This alpha, beta, gamma are contains this terms such as rate constants or equilibrium constant S r and so on combination of that it is a little complicated. So, I am not reproducing it here you can see that in any uh, standard textbook. So, what happens? Uh, uh, so, what is the link between quasi steady state and quasi equilibrium equilibrium approximation. Quasi steady state approximation as you can see here is a more generalized approach. We do not have to assume that individual steps are uh, 
uh, reactions are fast or slow and so on. We do not have to even assume that there is a rate determining step. All we said was the species are reactive. So, it is a more general approach compared to quasi equilibrium approximation. Now, uh, what is the connection between the two? So, this is the simplified form of this particular rate expression. What did we assume in quasi equilibrium? In quasi equilibrium, we assumed that k a and k d the kinetic rate constants of adsorption and desorption reactions are very high. So, if we make that assumption and put it into the quasi steady state approximation that is this alpha beta gamma are all these functions of k a k d, it turns out that we get alpha to be 1, beta to be 1, gamma to be 1 or in other words quasi steady state approximation general form reduces to quasi equilibrium approximation if you make a assumption that k a and k d are very large compared to compared to k s r and that is that is the connection between the two quasi steady state approximation and quasi equilibrium equilibrium approximation. So, this in short is how we get the kinetics of the catalytic reactions. Let it be uh, let it be uh, homogeneous catalysis, heterogeneous catalysis right now it is only the reaction. So, we are not worried about whether there are one phase or more phases present in the system. So, to summarize for a catalytic reaction we get rate expressions which have kinetic term multiplied by driving force divided by the adsorption term. The adsorption desorption terms uh, denote the strength of how uh, uh, strong or weak is the adsorption of A onto the or the reactants and products uh, onto the onto the surface. Surface reaction term determined by what kind of reaction that is taking place, whether it is a single site, dual site or uh, reaction of uh, 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 riddle uh, Ely uh, mechanisms such as adsorbed species and gas molecule for example. So, we will we will conclude our session on kinetics of uh, uh, catalytic reaction and in the next class we will look at last set of uh, 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 complex reaction namely a case where we do not have precise idea of what these reactants and products are and so how do we deal with such situations, how do we determine their kinetics. Thank you.